Hi guys. It is a cool and blustery day during the collapse of global industrial civilization as I think April goes out like a lion here somewhere in the great state of Virginia. I think it is the last day of April. I think it is Friday and I think it is April 30th, 2021, but I am losing track as I little dog and I make it back to New York, but I think it is Friday, April 30th, 2021. But anyway, since it is whatever Friday it is, time for me to do whatever I do whenever I can on Friday, and that's bring you this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant, where I simply tune in to uh, check in with mongabay.com and Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there at mongabay.com to see how this planet is falling apart one third of the way. We are one third of the way through 2021 and so this is what has been going on while the little dog and I have been barreling across the eastern U.S. in our gas sucking truck. Take it away Rhett Butler and uh, guys, I'm running late. I have a lot to cover here. <coughs> so I'm just going to skip over. Good Lord, where do I want to start? Uh, let's just start. We're, we're just going to, I'm, I'm going to skip on down to about the second half of the roundup. Uh, get a few stories in before heading off to West Virginia, but we're going to start, I guess, pretty much anywhere on the planet where we find a new study. Imagine that. Marine microplastics are now invading the atmosphere, study finds. A new study has found that microplastics are now being emitted into the atmosphere mainly from roads, the ocean, and agricultural practices. Yes. Uh, annual plastic production actually contributes a lesser amount of atmospheric microplastic than plastic discharge from the ocean. It is estimated that about 10 million Metric tons of microplastics are emitted into the atmosphere every year. Yes, the potential impacts of atmospheric microplastics on human health and ecosystems are largely unknown. Yes, they are. It is those unknown unknowns that will get you every time as both... Uh, who was that who famously said that? Well, of course, Don Juan Matus said that, and then uh, was it, who was it who said that? I, that famous quote, I tell you, my, my world history, who said about the unknown unknowns biting you in the butt? I don't think it was Dick Cheney, but it was one of those guys. That is exactly what he's talking about, but we're going to what is on the minds of Jair Bozo Nero this week. The mainstream media having quite a laugh, a sick, twisted laugh with this one. Uh, this is Manga Bay's spin on this story. Bozo Nero abandons enhanced Amazon commitment the same day he makes it. Yes, Brazilian President Jair Bozo Nero offered up Amazon conservation promises during the April 22nd Climate Leaders Summit. Yes, the Climate Leaders Summit hosted by the Save the President Joe Biden. Uh, then, that same day, Bozo Nero approved Brazil's 2021 budget that includes a 44 million, well, U.S. Uh, million dollar annual reduction for the Ministry of the Environment. Conservationists say that the cuts will be 
utterly devastating for the nation's deforestation monitoring program, which is exactly the point. That is the point. Uh, the reductions will also impact the monitoring of pollution levels, pesticide contamination, illegal mining, and wildlife trafficking. Yes, while environmentalists were enraged by the slashed ministry budget, the agricultural sector remains largely happy with Bozo Nero, whose policies continue to benefit them. However, if Brazil continues along its anti-environmental path, it risks global boycotts of its commodities. I'm sure Bozo Nero is quaking at his, in his boots. Okay, let's go over to the Philippines where we find a mining, where we find mining and logging threaten a wildlife wonderland on a Philippine mountain. Mount Busa on the island of Mindanao is among the most biodiverse and most threatened ecological areas in the country. It is a key biodiversity area and a known bird conservation area considered one of the last remaining strongholds of the critically endangered and nationally important Philippine eagle. Despite its ecological importance, the mountain has enjoyed little protection with only the topmost slopes falling under a local conservation zone. Yes. Uh, imagine that mining and logging threatening a wildlife wonderland. Yes. Okay. We just talked about the Philippine eagle. What's going on with the mysterious and maligned Chaco eagle? The Chaco or the crowned eagle uh, lives from southern Brazil to central Argentina. Fewer than 1,000 of the birds are now thought to exist in the wild where they face threats from drowning. Huh. from drowning, electrocution, shooting, poisoning, and habitat loss. Drowning. Anyway, uh, I've never heard of an eagle drowning. <coughs> Alright, well, we're going to go uh, over to Cambodia. You will not believe this. Deforestation ramps up in Cambodia's Kyo Saima Wildlife Sanctuary. The forest of the Kyo Saima Wildlife Sanctuary boasts a plethora of wildlife, including several endangered and recently described species. But the habitat of these animal these animals depend on is rapidly disappearing with 32% of the protected areas primary forest cleared over the past 20 years. And recent satellite data suggests 2021 is not starting out well for Chemosima with higher numbers of deforestation alerts detected than in years past Major drivers of forest loss include illegal logging and agriculture. So this is another one of those uh, mythical protected area wildlife sanctuaries. 32% uh, gone and the chainsaws are buzzing as I'm buzzing. Alright. What is going on with gas fields and jihad? 
All right, we now have a resource war moving into full speed ahead on the planet. Gas fields and jihad, Mozambique's Cabo Delgado becomes a resource-rich war zone. Yes, in the early 2010s, the fossil fuel industry discovered Africa's largest natural gas deposits off the remote northern coastline of Mozambique. <clears throat> the discovery led to a massive wave of investment and almost immediately a corruption scandal involving Credit Suisse, which I'm pretty sure is a Swiss banking uh, outfit. The development of the gas field and liquid natural gas plant has been criticized for evicting locals and destroying livelihoods. In late March, the town of Palma near the oil facility came under attack from a jihadist group, and on Monday, French energy giant Total, uh, I can't read all of this French stuff in the middle of this, uh, English language, but I guess uh, we have the French energy giant, uh, Swiss bankers, jihads, can you say resource wars in Mozambique? Alright, we have some profound ignorance. I don't know what, what has happened to Colony of Cells recently here on this channel. Haven't heard from Colony. Maybe he could straighten out some of the pri the profound ignorance. Microbes, a missing piece in the biodiversity puzzle. Researchers are certain that human activity has resulted in a decline in plant and animal species, but a huge unknown remains. What impacts have human actions? ranging from climate change to ocean acidification, deforestation and land use change, nitrogen pollution and more, had on the Earth's microbes. A new paper offers a troubling answer. Science suffers from profound ignorance about the ways in which microbial biodiversity is being influenced by rapid environmental changes now happening on our planet. Yes. One thing researchers do agree on, knowing how human activities are influencing the microbial world could be very important to the future of humanity and our planet. I bet. Okay, let's head over to uh, some greenwashing in Papua New Guinea. Yes, a new Greenpeace report has identified a litany of loopholes and violations in Indonesia's forest and palm oil moratoriums as well as other forest protection measures. The report alleges that govern, government officials routinely flout their own regulations to continue issuing licenses to plantation companies. Among the alleged violations are the constant changes to maps of forest that should be off limits for plantations and forest clearing permits granted to companies that do not meet the non-existent requirements. Okay, let's do one more look at Bozo Nero, as if we haven't heard this one uh, before. Large-scale deforesters emboldened under Brazil's Bozo Nero, deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has increased 
and the size of individual patches of cleared land has also grown, porting, pointing to organized efforts at deforestation, and according to a new paper, under the administration of President Jair Bolsonaro, the average size of deforested areas has increased by 61 percent with patches larger than 100 hectares, otherwise known as 250 acres, now the new normal. Quoting uh, the deforestation policy expert Ralph Troncoso, quote, nobody cuts down 100 hectares with a chainsaw. It involves giant machines. Yes. Troncoso has called for a reinstatement of deforestation control policies that Bozo Nero abandoned when he came into office. Yes. Um, then uh, I guess their podcast of the week, Two Tunas in a Tale of Managed Extinction. Yes, looking at the, uh, the yellowfin tuna and the blue tuna, how, you know, these fisheries management uh, operations are managing tuna right into extinction. Okay, we have a question here in the headline. Leaders, leaders, otherwise known as followers of uh, corporate, uh, their corporate bosses, leaders make bold climate pledges. But is it all just smoke and mirrors? Forty nations, producers of 80% of annual carbon emissions, made pledges of heightened climate ambition this week as U.S. President Planet Saving Joe Biden's Leaders Summit on Climate. Yes, but as each head of state took to the podium, climate activists responded by pointing to the abysmal lack of action by those nations. Yes, as the U.S. Pr promised to have its emissions by 2030, advocates noted the lack of policies in place to achieve that goal and the likelihood of intense Republican resistance. China promised at the summit to eliminate coal plants, but 247 gigawatts of coal power is currently in planning or development stages in China. The UK, EU, Japan, and South Korea all pledge to do more, but all are committed to burning forest biomass to replace coal, a solution relying on a long-standing carbon accounting error that counts forest biomass as carbon neutral, though scientists say it produces more emissions than coal per unit of electricity made, said one environmental advocate remaining anonymous, quote, this summit could be a critical turning point in our fight against climate change, but we have seen ambitious goals before and we have seen them fall flat. Today's commitments must be followed with effective implementation and with transparent reporting and accurate carbon accounting. Yes, good luck. Uh, let's see, do we want a corona panic story? 
Uh, there has been a reported surge in illegal fishing of the Piraruku, also known as the Arapaima, a massive Amazon fish. The fishing season is supposed to be closed from November to March to protect fish populations. Yes. Uh, but the economic fallout, the economic fallout of the corona panic and a lack of enforcement due to the lockdowns have compounded the problem. Yes, pushing more people into illegal fishing to earn money. Yeah, yeah, this is the corona panic story you will not hear coming out of Brazil anywhere but Manga Bay. Uh, gee, what a surprise. Uh, as climate summit unfolds, no Biden bulls Bozo Nero Amazon deal forthcoming. Yes, uh, I'm not even going to get into this. Uh, it has become apparent that talks between Biden and Bozo Nero to save the planet are likely stalemated with no deal announced nor likely anytime soon. Yes. Uh, Amazon deforestation has continued soaring even as critics offered substantial proof Brazil is insincere in its environmental commitments. Yes, for example, new federal rules make it nearly impossible to collect fines for environmental crimes. Uh, anyway, all right, but guys, we can all go back to sleep. You can ignore everything that uh, Rhett Butler has told you in the last 15, 20 minutes because we have a new report. Humanity's dysfunctional relationship with Earth can still be fixed. Yes, a new report released in the lead up to the Our Planet, Our Future Nobel Prize Summit provides an overview of the numerous challenges facing our planet due to human pressures. Yes, including the transgression of several planetary boundaries that help regulate and stabilize the Earth. Yes. However, it also considers <coughs> ways in which global sustainability can still be achieved through transformative change. Yes. Oh boy, moving on. Uh, they have a conversation with environmental journalist Michelle Nijewis about her new book Beloved Beast Fighting for Life in an Age of Extinction. Yes. She does share a guarded sense of hopium, <coughs> a guarded sense of hopium that humans, <coughs> humans can positive it, positively influence the future of all life on Earth. Yes, guarded hopium that humans can positively influence the future of life on Earth. <coughs> yes, by going extinct. My one dollar glasses from uh, the 
dollar store will not stay on my face. All right. More books, uh, book reviews. Uh, anyway, guys, I could go on this, but uh, I understand I'm talking to myself. The wind is whipping the microphone. The little dog is heavy in my lap, and I have to get out of here to almost heaven, West Virginia, as I, uh, I hear it's going to be 36 degrees where I'm heading. Uh, oh, well. I should be pulling into New York, baby. Sometime next week, come see me and the little dog at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Well, you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog. We need to hit the high road to New York.